Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to look at some examples of motion time graphs. So we're going to look at the displacement, velocity and acceleration time graphs for different scenarios. So let's get going. So we we'll start by looking at the three types of graph for constant velocity. So remember, we've already seen that for constant velocity, the velocity time graph will have a straight line horizontally like that. And because the object has a constant velocity, it won't be accelerating. So that means that its acceleration must be zero. So the acceleration time graph will simply be a line along zero here. And for the displacement time graph it's going to look like this with a straight line going through the origin because you're covering the same amount of displacement or distance in the same amount of time. Looking at uniform acceleration now you should remember that this is the velocity time graph for a uniform or constant acceleration where we have a positively sloping straight line and because it's a constant acceleration that means that our acceleration time graph will have a straight line going along the way just like the velocity time graph would for constant velocity. So we've got constant acceleration there and for the displacement time graph we're going to have a curve up the way. And the reason it looks like this is because as the object speeds up and gets faster and faster, then the object is going to start covering more distance or more displacement in a set time. In the same way, we can look at the three graphs of motion for a uniform deceleration. So if we look at the velocity time graph, first of all, remember we said the velocity time graph for a constant or uniform deceleration will be a negatively sloping line. So there's our negatively sloping line there. And for the acceleration time graph, because it's a deceleration, we'll remember that as a negative acceleration. So we need to show that on the acceleration time graph. So we've got this constant horizontal line down in the negative quadrant down here. So that's going to be a straight line along the way. And lastly, the displacement time graph for a uniform deceleration that looks like this. So it's a curve that starts at zero at the origin and it's going to curve along like this until it sort of levels off. Now the reason it does this is because if you think about it, the object is going to be slowing down. So it's going to be moving faster to begin with. So it's going to be covering more distance or more displacement to begin with. So over time, it's going to be covering less distance or less displacement each second and so we can show that by having a curve that's leveling off here. Next we're going to look at a fairly common example of motion which is an object thrown vertically upwards into the air. So in this case we're going to use our sign convention and we're going to define upwards to be positive because the object is moving upwards to begin with so that would make sense. So that we can visualize what's going on here we're going to look at an animation for an object being thrown vertically upwards. So if we click the play button I just want to briefly mention a few things before we go into more detail for them. But in this case, we're defining upwards to be positive because the ball is moving upwards to begin with, just like we said earlier. And so the velocity of the ball will start at a non-zero positive value up here. And then as the ball travels upwards, it's going to uniformly decelerate until it reaches the highest point in its motion, at which point it reaches zero meters per second. And remember we said that a change in direction on a velocity time graph can be shown by going from the positive into the negative quadrant. So at this point, our object travels travels back down the way and it's accelerating as it does that until it reaches the ground down here. So I'll just show you that again quickly. So there's its highest point in its motion and then it hits the ground. So we're now going to break this down into a bit more detail and look at the acceleration time graph as well as the displacement time graph. So an object is thrown vertically upwards and will initially travel at its launch velocity before reaching zero meters per second at the highest point of its motion. So if we just consider the velocity time graph for now to make sense of this, you're starting at a non-zero positive velocity, that's the velocity at which you have thrown the object, and the object is going to start slowing down and slowing down until it reaches the highest point in its motion. At this point, it will then increase in velocity, eventually reaching the velocity with which it was launched just before it hits the ground. Now remember that after it's reached its highest point in motion, the object will travel back down the way. So because it's moving downwards, we need to show the change in direction in the velocity time graph by going below the axis. So we increase the speed in the negative direction down here. So it speeds up and speeds up until it hits the ground at this point. So as we said, it's going to hit the ground at the same speed at which you threw it with, but this is going to be a negative speed and that's a positive speed. Now for our object thrown vertically upwards, this is what the acceleration time graph is going to look like. And the reason we've got a graph that looks like this is because acceleration due to gravity is acting on the object at all times, regardless of its direction of motion. So it doesn't matter whether the object is going up or going down, it's only the acceleration due to gravity downwards that we need to consider for the acceleration time graph 
So this is going to be a constant value and that constant value would actually be at negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And lastly for the displacement time graph we've got something that looks like this where we've got a curve that comes up the way, it reaches the highest point in motion and then down the way. The reason this curve is spaced out is because all of their motion is going to happen over time. So as soon as you throw the ball up it's going to travel up and that's going to be happening over time until it reaches the highest point in its motion and then it's going to start falling towards the ground still over time until it hits the ground. So the last example we'll look at is for a bouncing object. So this could be a bouncing ball or some kind of toy car or trolley in the physics lab that's going to bounce off the end of a ramp or something like that. And for this example we're going to take downwards to be positive. The reason being we're going to consider what happens when our object is dropped out of someone's hand or it's falling down the way first of all. So we're going to take downwards to be positive because that's the way that the object is moving first so it maybe makes a bit more sense. It should be noted however that you can consider this example taking upwards to be positive instead. You would just get an opposite looking velocity time graph. To help you visualise what's going on here we're going to look at a little animation of a bouncing ball and we're going to look at the velocity time graph being drawn at the same time. And in these animations that I'm going to show you we're doing the same as what we just said in the notes and we're defining downwards as positive because the ball is going to start moving downwards to begin with. So if I click play on the animation Hopefully you were able to see there that those lines here correspond to the quick bounces, the changes in direction. And it's worth noting that in this example the peaks of the velocity have stayed the same, i.e. the ball has not lost any velocity as it's bounced. And that is because this is the animation for a ball where there is no loss of energy at the ground. But we can also look at an animation for where there is some energy loss at the ground. And this is more realistic, this is what would happen in real life. So if we look at this one... You should hopefully see now that the peak here is actually lower than the peak here and that means that some velocity has been lost because there has been energy loss. And same with the peaks down here, you'll see that this one is closer to zero than this one and again that is because of energy loss. So we're now going to look at the parts of this in more detail and then look at the acceleration time graph and the displacement time graph. So it says here that the object's velocity will increase until it hits the ground where there is a sudden change in direction of motion. So let's say we're considering a bouncing ball for example and you drop the ball out of your hand. Well, as soon as you drop the ball, its speed is going to keep increasing and it's going to be accelerating until it eventually hits the ground. So at this point here, the ball is going to hit the ground. And the way that we show that quick change in direction when the ball bounces is by jumping to the opposite quadrant in our graph. So remember, this is positive and this is negative. So to show the change in direction, we've gone from positive into negative. So that's happened, you'll notice, over a very short time as well. And so we're now at this point here where it then says the object's velocity will then decrease in the opposite direction until it reaches its maximum height, where it reaches zero meters per second. So as the object is bounced, it will start slowing down and negatively accelerating, so decelerating, until it reaches zero meters per second again. And that is where it's reached the highest point in its motion. Now what would then happen is that the object will fall and repeat the above steps until it comes to a complete stop. So your graph would continue with these zigzags in the exact same way until they eventually leveled off to zero. So that was because the energy would continuously be lost. Now it says here that realistically the object will not return to the same height after hitting the ground each time due to energy loss. So unless a question is specifically saying to ignore energy losses, then we should be showing a gradual decrease in the maximum velocity that this object will reach. If we look at the acceleration time graph now, it says here that acceleration due to gravity is acting the object at all times, but remember we have defined downwards as positive, so this appears above the axis in this example. So thinking back to our object thrown upwards into the air, we drew a negative acceleration at minus 9.8 down here. Now it would also be 9.8 here, but because we've defined downwards to be negative, we've had to draw it above the axis at this point. So this would be positive positive 9.8 meters per second squared. And you'll also notice a strange part in the middle of the acceleration time graph where the acceleration drops considerably and then back up. And this is because there is a quick change in the acceleration when the ball compresses on impact with the ground. So this is the impact on the ground, basically at the same time interval that we've got this quick change in direction here. So it's this little region here of time. And lastly, for the displacement time graph, our bouncing ball is gonna accelerate at a constant rate and then decelerate at a constant rate. So remember, it's gonna be covering more distance or displacement in a shorter time just before it hits the ground and then after it hits the ground when it's decelerating it's going to start covering a smaller distance or displacement in a set time. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.